thank you for sharing that. That's really good advice. And I also encourage people who want to go into business to maybe do gradually start it on the side and then transition to part-time if possible before they make in the leap, just to have that cushion until the business really takes off and it's steady. So going back to the career advice and helping people to choose well. So we discussed one avenue, which was obviously entrepreneurship and the other avenues you said that they need to do some self-reflection and really self-reflection, learn what is it that they really enjoy and what makes them fulfilled, right? How could they do that? Do you have any tools that maybe you can recommend people to try? Different exams or courses or quizzes that just kind of figure out what you do enjoy to really see where you will best fit. It's looking at different careers that you might be interested, the positive and negatives. It's going on LinkedIn. I've personally gone on LinkedIn in different industries that I've been interested in light and I would network to individuals and say, Hey, my name is Justin. I've been in recruiting for a little bit, but I've looked into cybersecurity or I looked into being a compliance officer and I found some things I've been really interested in. And I would love to schedule a call with you five, 10 minutes to discuss your career, your background. I think one of the things is that people are always happy to talk about themselves. They can go on for days to talk about themselves. So really making about them to see what their career path have been, has been huge. So you'll not say everybody will respond to your messages. I, I don't want to put that out there, but I've always found that one or two or three people have always took time to speak with me five or 10 minutes because you never know, they were maybe in a previous situation such as you. I've met a lot of individuals who have not just stayed in one career path. I recently spoke with a head of talent acquisition at another company where she wasn't always in talent acquisition. She started in another department within the bank and she dabbled in some parts of HR. And then she had a mentor or boss said, what have you thought about talent acquisition? And she made that transition into it. So there are a lot of people who have not stayed or stuck in the same career path from when they graduated school that has transitioned and they're very open to talk to other individuals who are like themselves. So I would say, again, go online, take different career quizzes to see what you would feel would fall best into, see if it matches. Which one you can recommend? Not off the top of my head that I can really speak to. There are a lot of ones out there, to be honest with you, that are also free, that it's something short, like 30 questions that you can take that gives you different career paths that you can join and see if any of those interest you. Again, doing another internet search to see what things that interest you or what roles that you may be interested in. And if you go in a deep dive, looking at job descriptions, seeing that's, that's something that you're interested in. And if it is, reaching out to people on LinkedIn to see, scheduling a 10 or 15 minute conversations. Again, I've, that's something I've done a lot where I thought I would be interested in a role and then I would speak to some individuals and I'm like, oh, this is a lot of data focused. I thought it was more maybe just really cybersecurity or really compliance, looking in and investigating and different things, but finding out it involved a lot of technical knowledge and using spreadsheets, using formulas. And I'm like, you know what, that's not something I would typically like to do. So maybe that's mm -hmm. not a path I would want to go in. Let's look at some other things. So that's always a great thing. The last thing I I would recommend to people is that you find a role, you look at a job description, you find something that you might like, and then apply to the job, right? Because again, it could be the case that let's say if you do get the job, it might not be something that you're interested in. And then you might want to leave that job and then it looks jumpy on your resume. And also why I also say network with people because you're actually talking to a live person who might say, you know what, this is not what the job description says. Oh, oh what the job description says is not exactly what the role is. Or it, it says this about a role, but what's not saying about is some of the challenges you might go through. So that's why I also say it's good to network with people actually in the industry because they can tell you the positives and negatives in the role and connect you to other people, maybe in their department, in their social circle and network that they could actually connect you to that could lead to an opportunity.